Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available, or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, Let's review the three rules of explorers. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on or has writing on the back or is ripped and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself or crumpling it or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This week we're going to continue to explore erasers in our second workshop in a month-long theme exploring uh, erasers and different ways we can use them in our art making and play. This week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually look at erasers in a different way than you've probably ever looked at or used them before. This week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at erasers like objects. So by that, what I mean is that usually we look at erasers as a tool, right? They work for us to erase marks. If you explored with me um, last week, we use them as a mark making tool. They actually made marks or um, the shavings that are left behind. When you use an eraser, we used some of those as well. Um, so we use them as tools. But what if we stop looking at what erasers can do and instead we look at them as the objects that they are, the shapes they are, the materials they're made out of? What can erasers be is how we're gonna be exploring erasers this week. So what I thought we could uh, use to start exploring erasers as objects are, of course, erasers. And I've pulled out a bunch of different erasers that I have. And these collect over time. Sometimes um, people will leave them behind for me. Sometimes I'll find them in a drawer. Uh, they'll come in art sets when I buy a new set of pencils. Um, also, sometimes when people are getting rid of their uh, supplies, I will tell people to give me their old erasers, especially if they don't like them um, or think that they are not working anymore because um, there are different ways that you can use erasers besides just erasing marks. So whatever erasers you can find are great, even if they're not great at being an eraser, they're just, that's just what they were originally for, that's awesome. If they're dirty, if they're clean, if they're new, if they're still wrapped up, whatever you can find is great. If you don't have any erasers, no problem. You can just watch me and follow along. And then when you do have an opportunity to get and find an eraser, then you can do your own exploring to see what you notice with the erasers that you find. I have also pulled out some paper. I went to my recycling bin. I grabbed a bunch of paper that I had cut. Uh, that were ripped out, a piece of cardboard that was left over, some packing paper. It doesn't have to be new, it doesn't have to be clean, it can totally have marks on it because we, we're just using erasers, so if we really wanted to get rid of the marks, we could totally use um, our erasers to get rid of the marks. We're also not doing any of our exploration or play this week um, for keeps. So anything that we make is just gonna go back into the recycling bin. So anything you can find is great. And then do you have any mark making tools? And a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. So that can be, um, that can be a pencil, that can be a crayon, that could be a marker. I always tend to use markers and explorers because it's easiest to show up on the camera as I'm sharing and exploring with you. Um, but unlike some weeks when you are using an eraser as a tool to erase marks, this week we totally could use uh, markers and not worry about it because we are not trying to erase any lines. So it doesn't really matter if an eraser is good or bad at erasing marker lines. So I pulled out my markers as my mark making tool this week, but whatever you have available is just great. And we'll see what we can um, try and learn and do with whatever you've been able to assemble. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these stickies to the side so we have just a bit more room. And for the first couple of minutes of our explorers, what I want you to do is I just want you to look at all the erasers that you've been able to collect. If you haven't been able to collect any, check out some of the erasers that I have. When we start looking at our erasers, what do we notice? You notice maybe their color, their shape, what they're supposed to do. So some of them are supposed to erase pencil marks, some of them are supposed to erase pen marks. Maybe you have an eraser that's supposed to erase a different kind of mark that I don't have here. 
What if we were going to organize our erasers? What are different ways that we could organize our erasers? Again, we could look at them by color. We could look at them by job. We could also look at them by size and shape. I'm gonna take about a minute and I'm gonna organize my erasers in a way that uh, makes sense to me. You do the same thing. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is how I've erased, or <laughs> this is how I've laid out my erasers. If you laid out your erasers, what did you do? How did you organize them? Did you form any patterns? Did you put them together so that they were the same? Do they match colors? How did you organize them on your making space? For me, I started out by size. You can see I've got kind of these smaller ones over here, and then I had medium sized and bigger ones, or bigger ones, and then the biggest ones. And then I didn't actually find that very interesting because the middle sized ones were kind of similar. And what I found instead that I was more interested in the differences in shapes of the erasers that I had used a lot of and had started to be round because of how I use erasers and the ones that were left with kind of sharper edges to them. I found that to be more interesting and uh, a category that I liked more than just looking at them by size. These are still kind of more medium ones. Then over here, I put these ones together, the ones that I kind of ripped off of other pieces before and that were really, really dirty. And I, get, I end up actually liking this category the most, just looking at them. I think they, they look the most interesting, the, the least like erasers. And then I had my rounder flat ones over here, and then the roundest ones over here. And so to do this kind of organizing, I had to actually look at my erasers. Normally we're not really looking at our erasers, we just want them to do the job show up, erase our line, and then go back into our pencil box. But if we have no lines to erase, all of a sudden we have a bit more time to start looking at our objects, to start looking at our erasers as something more than what they were designed to do. You could do this a few times. You could see what you notice every time you pull out your erasers. Every time you make a new category, you could ask yourself again, what do you notice? You might notice something new. This time I organized it by color. And now that I'm not really paying attention to 
the size of these ones like I was before, I'm able to really look at all the pink erasers on their own and notice just how different these shapes all are. Oh, blue. You know what, I'm gonna put my blues over here. Yep, there we go. Just how different each one of these shapes are. And then even within this category of pinks, these pinks are kind of different from this pink, and even this pink is different again. How many ways can you organize your erasers into different categories? What do you notice every time you do? This is a great way of doing something called deep looking. It's when we give ourselves time to spend moments to spend time to spend time looking and being with objects that we don't usually give much time or attention to and when we do that we can start noticing things that are really interesting for example i told you that this pile over here was originally my favorite and i think it's my favorite because not only is it the most used and another way of saying that could be the most loved because i've used it the, the most so i reached for it the most but also out of all of these these ones look the least like erasers this one has a, a ladybug on it which is cool and I don't always expect erasers to be yellow or green but these look like erasers if I was to push all of these erasers aside now and pull out one of my pieces of paper what happens then? When we place an eraser on a page, is it still an eraser? When it's sitting on the page, it can't do what it was meant to do, which was erase it. We can't pick it up because it's part of our artwork now. It's sitting there. And all of a sudden we have this opportunity to really look at the eraser as something more than it was before. It's on a piece of paper now. I'm gonna use a different pencil. You know what, I'm gonna use a marker so it's a little bit clearer again. There we go. Well, it's not an eraser anymore. It's a figure. And it's not an eraser anymore. It's a sunny day. And it's not just a person on a sunny day. It's a person on a rocky beach. What do you think? Are these still erasers? Sure. I mean, their names are erasers. If we pulled them off the page, they would have a different use. We could still use them as erasers. But when they're on the page and we don't move them, they become objects that we can focus on, that we can look at, that can become a part of our art. And if we think about it, when we use things like glitter, or when we glue objects onto our page, they become part of our art. We don't expect we're going to take paper, rip paper off of our collage. Same thing as when we're using our erasers as an object. In this moment, we can't take 
the erasers off the page because they're part of our art making, our exploration. Now, it would be really hard to store this. We're not making anything for keeps, but if we were, um, sticking this up on the fridge might be too heavy. But if you were to make something really cool with your, um, with your erasers as part of a picture, as a way of exploring a multimedia or mixed media or different kinds of media um, picture or composition, you could take a picture of it and then you could print that out and stick it on the fridge or frame it. So we could put it on the page and check it out and look at it like this. And I'm gonna, for the, for the rest of our art making, uh, I'm gonna move it over here and I'm gonna let those pieces be part of that composition. Let's keep looking. What else do we notice as we explore and check out our erasers as objects rather than tools? Have you ever tried bouncing an eraser? What if you were to take the different erasers and see how they move? What do you notice? Do some of the erasers bounce more or less? Are some of the erasers louder or quieter? Have you ever stood in front of a mirror and just danced? Danced in every way. Didn't really think about it, but just let your arm or your leg or your body or your head move however you want? Well, why not erasers? What happens if we let our erasers dance? What if you were to put on some music and dropped the erasers in time with the music? Could you make your erasers dance? It's a song that I know. Okay, here we go. So I've got my stage. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take it a little bit further. You don't have to do this. This is just for fun. And I'm gonna make a stage. There we go. And then there's the curtains on the side of the stage. There we go. And all of my performers, all my dancers are waiting on the side of the stage, ready to go on when the lights go low. All right, all right. So, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. <laughs> Can you write a song with your erasers? You wouldn't need as many erasers as me. Could you write a song or play a song with just a single eraser? What if you could hear the erasers and um, make a note of how each one sounds? To me, they all sound exactly the same when they're hitting the table. But if you really listen, you might be able to hear the difference in sound between one eraser and another. If one of the erasers sounds lighter or deeper or brighter than another, you could play them at different times in your songs. What if we were going to make a game using our erasers? If you have permission with your erasers, 
like if they are yours. Um, have you ever tried making a mark on your eraser before? So for me, this is an old eraser. It's not really erasing anything, kind of makes a mark on the page when I use it. I've got lots of these, um, and so it's okay for me to do this. You're probably gonna want permission if you're borrowing or you're using an eraser that belongs to somebody else. But if it's an older eraser, it's a dried out eraser, it's not really erasing really well anymore. What if you were to mark your eraser? I'm gonna put a one on this side, and I'm gonna put a two on the other side. Well, what if you were going to play a game with somebody where you had to guess what number was going to come up? Okay, you take the number two and I take the number one. Let's see what happens. Oh, it went way over there. Let's try again. <laughs> I'll slide it back over. Two, well done. Let's do it again. What do you think it's gonna be? You be the two again, and I'll be the one. Oh, two again. What if I was to hold it up higher? <laughs> it's gonna jump off the page. Hey, there we go, one. And so all of a sudden, this could become like a chance object, so like a die. So if you didn't have a die to roll, you could use this like a coin, like flipping a coin. Heads or tails? Ooh, didn't even know it could land on its side. Okay, so I'm gonna go three. Then maybe I'll go four over here. And so maybe uh, you and your friend, your classmates, your siblings, your family, Whoever you're hanging out with doesn't know what they want or maybe what movie they want to watch or what they want to have for dinner. So one is, uh, what, chicken for dinner. Two is uh, rice and veggies. Three is uh, pakoras. And four is noodle soup. All right. And you could put the thing that you want less than the others on the, the thin side, but what are we gonna have for dinner? Two, rice and veggies. I don't, I don't really want rice and veggies. Chicken, yay. So this can become a chance object. And just because I colored on the side of my eraser doesn't mean that I can't still use my eraser. And over time, right, I'll get to that point where it will cover that, or, you know, I could try rubbing the side of the eraser and see if I could get the, the mark to come off, but it's not, it's not affecting my ability to erase it, so great. What if these became um, uh, markers on a game board? So you and a friend are going to play a game. Here we go. And I'm gonna go two, two, four, four, minus one, minus one and go again. So you and your favorite color are green. And uh, here, no, I don't want to take those away. Those are part of my, part of my image. Here, there we go, blue. So it's blue versus green. And it's my turn. Shake, shake the eraser. One. Oh, off to a slow start. One. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a long game. Two. One, two. Two. One, two. One. And now I can go two ahead. One. Same thing. Two ahead. Neck and neck. 
Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Oh. One. Four. One, two, three, four. So close. Two. One, two. Last turn. All right. Do, do, do. So there you go. Right? Erasers as game pieces. And so you don't have to go take uh, game objects, uh, game plastic pieces out of a, a board game and accidentally get them lost. You can use your um, erasers, especially erasers that nobody wants anymore and nobody's using anymore. You could color the side of the erasers and make it so that it was a unique game piece for you. And you can add more people. How else could we use erasers? I have one more that I was thinking, and that was uh, when I was organizing or looking at the different uh, erasers earlier, that they have these different shapes. So this eraser, you know, has the curve and, and no sharp edges to it. Oh, and it moves really great. Oh, as far as the dancing erasers before, I should, could make just a dance using this eraser. Cool. So you got your rounded erasers. Most of them are pretty flat. At least all of the ones that I have right now are pretty flat. But some of them have these really um, interesting uh, cuts to them, curves to them, edges, diagonals. So what if we started looking at the shapes of our erasers? What happens then? Could you make a message for somebody out of just erasers? Could you draw a picture using just erasers? Could you stack your erasers and see ooh, how high you could stack them before they topple over. Where would you need to place the erasers? And if it's really easy, ooh, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> if it's easier to do it like this, then change the side. How tall? Not very tall, it seems, when I do it this way. What order do you have to place them in? If it's really easy by putting the bigger erasers at the bottom, challenge yourself to putting the smaller ones at the bottom. How high of a structure could you make? To do this, you really have to be looking and holding and feeling your erasers going slowly practicing being intentional with you placing each one of them. Oh, this one's really heavy and kind of weird. I don't think this one's gonna work. Okay. There are lots of different ways that we can use erasers. And I've just explored a few. Like I like to do every week, I'm gonna leave the camera running while I clean up my space so that we can be all ready to start making for our third and last week exploring erasers together next week. Let's be sure to totally clear up our space because we want to res uh, practice respect um, for our tools but also our space um, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now.